had an unfortunate case recently where a son stole all of dad's money after he had Alzheimer's. And the way that the son did it was by using a power of attorney. So they're very powerful documents that allow the agent, in this case, the son, to go in and take all dad's money out of his bank account. Well, we execute powers of attorney to be able to do those things. We want our agents, whoever we appoint in our power of attorney, to be able to go and write checks and do things on our behalf. And that allows us to avoid a conservatorship, which is a court appointment. So much more invasive, much more costly. But of course, there's a downside to powers of attorney because whoever we appoint as our agent, they have lots and lots of power. And so we need to be very, very careful with who to appoint as our agent. And unfortunately, the fact is that most often, whenever a elderly person has their property stolen, it's oftentimes a family member. So we need to be careful with who our power of attorney is going to be. Very common choice is our children. That's not uncommon. Most of my clients choose their children. But if you're not going to choose your children, well, who else can you choose? CPAs, banks, attorneys, uh, independent fiduciaries, they can always also be your power of attorney, your agent under your power of attorney. The plus side is that if you choose the right agent, then they've got policies like of, of insurance policies and things like that where if something does go wrong if one of their staff happened to steal from you then there's a way to get the money back because far too often with family members if somebody steals your money they spend it and even if you're right and you could win the case who cares there's no money there to get um, downside of course of using independent fiduciaries they're going to charge you how much are they going to charge you well it really depends on the relationship that you've set up beforehand but normally it's going to be oftentimes an hourly fee, or if we're talking about trust administration, it could be a percent of the total trust estate. If you've got any questions on who you should choose as your power of attorney, feel free to post it in the comments below. Love to hear from you uh, and just get your thoughts on this. Bill Henry from Robinson & Henry, and I'll talk to you next time.